politics now because uh, some pundits uh, feel that uh, the, the West is trying uh, to use Ukraine to fight uh, Russia and uh, the Ukraine is in the middle of the war between uh, uh, the, the Western powers and, and Russia. How uh, feasible or what is the, the, the veracity of the statement? And of course, how can we ch uh, reverse this? Because uh, c c c uh, civilians have lost their lives in, in this war since it started in February. So how can we turn this uh, on the path of the population and put an end to it? Well, I think you have to look at the, who are the biggest victims of this war? It's the Ukrainian people, not because of Russia, but because of the puppet government of Zelensky. There was an attempt made by the Russians and the Ukrainians in March of this year, one month after the fighting started, to reach a ceasefire. It was moving very well with, with uh, Turkish uh, cooperation, and it was stopped. Boris Johnson from the United Kingdom was sent in by NATO to tell Zelensky to stop the negotiations. Now, how many Ukrainians have died since then because of this order coming from NATO? And why did NATO make that order? They did that because the goal of NATO was stated by the U.S. Defense Secretary in March at a meeting at Rammstein Air Base in Germany. He said, our goal is to weaken Russia. That's been the goal since the end of the Cold War. And it's important to note that it, when the Cold War ended, the U.S. promised the Russians that NATO would not move one inch eastward. Those are the words of James Baker, the Secretary of State. Since that time, NATO has moved 1,000 kilometers eastward, added something like 16 new members, putting offensive weapons on the border of Russia. And who's in the middle of this? As you point out, the Ukrainians, the Ukrainian people. They're not being given freedom. The coup in 2014 that brought the, the current government into power, that was the Poroshenko government, then Zelensky, that coup was carried out by $5 billion spent by the United States, according to the Under Secretary of State, Victoria Nuland. Now, many people in Africa are familiar with this, color revolutions, regime change, when a, a government is too committed to defending the standard of living of its people in Africa, it gets overthrown. And it's accused of corruption, it's accused of, of stealing, it's, it's accused of, of violating democracy. And a new government is put in, which acts under the orders of the international banks. Now, that was done in Iraq. It was done in Africa, to, in Libya, to Gaddafi. It was done in Syria. They tried to do it in Syria. They tried to do it in Venezuela. And they did it in Ukraine. And so the, it, this is what has to be discussed. Does this make the people of Ukraine better? The fact is that since 2014, the standard of living in Ukraine has dropped by anywhere between 20 and 40 percent, depending on which survey you look at. In other words, after they were given their so-called freedom, they've had a catastrophic decline in per capita income. And then they're being used, as we call it, a battering ram against Russia. Now, if you discuss that, you're accused of changing the subject because the only subject they want to talk about is Putin and Russia, up to and including the point of canceling Russian culture, accusing Tchaikovsky of being an agent of Putin's imperialism. You know, so we're, we're dealing with a narrative which is, makes no sense. And if the Ukrainian people were not under this wartime conditions, I'm sure they would not be going along with this because the coup in 2014 was heavily funded and backed by NATO. And how do you deal with a NATO coup? Well, they tried to get an agreement between the Ukrainian government, Germany, France, and Russia to stop the attacks on Eastern Ukraine. It was signed by Poroshenko, who said he only did it to buy time. Zelensky ran for president saying he would fulfill the terms of the Minsk agreement. But when he became president, he dropped it. 
And we now know why, because the neo-Nazis in his administration said if he negotiates with the Russians, he will be hanging from a tree in a public square in Kiev. And then they come along and say, here, we'll give you all this money, we'll give you all this free press and adulation, but you have to fight against Russia. And that's where we are right now. And anyone who talks against it is targeted as an enemy of Ukraine. I, mean, I, I take this very seriously. I have some friends who are Ukrainian historians, professors, who, because of their patriotism, rallied to the cause, but they know that it's a false cause, but they're afraid to speak out. One of the Schiller Institute uh, collaborators, Natalia Vitrenko, who is the head of the uh, popular or the uh, progressive socialist party of Ukraine, her party was outlawed in a kangaroo court. And her co-members have been threatened, have been jailed, are intimidated. 16 political parties have been shut down in Ukraine. Is that democracy? The Ukrainian opposition media shut down. So, you know, th there's a false narrative here. And I, I think what's important is that the U.S. is trying to impose what they say is the one model. There's only one model of development that's acceptable. Well, I think many countries in Africa don't want to be told what to do. In fact, the South African foreign minister told Blinken, don't come here and lecture us. Don't bully us. We're a sovereign nation. And I think the, we see that in the United Nations, the refusal of many African governments to support the U.S. sanction policy. So we need to have that discussion. But unfortunately, in the West, you can't have it without being threatened. Afrique Média, le monde, c'est nous.